The world of human or robots is changing extremely rapidly. And a lot of it is because we've made massive progress from an AI perspective in the digital world. But there's a lot of obstacles and walls in the way from a hardware perspective for human or robots. There are so many different issues like overheating actuators, fragile components, and super immature supply chains. But in this video, we have an expert of supply chain and technology in Jeff Lutz that wrote a piece a few weeks ago that really charts a path for these human or robot manufacturers like Tesla, like Figure, to get to a point where human or robots will be absolutely everywhere. And so we've partnered with Jeff to bring his written piece to life using video. In this video, Jeff very clearly outlines what's going to be needed from the perspective of human or robot manufacturers. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. We may be at a critical juncture in technology a point of inflection where real-world AI and large language model capability is rapidly starting to outpace our readiness in hardware. The makers of humanoid bots are facing a monumental challenge. And it's not just about the AI, it's about the machine itself. They will be challenged on custom actuator design for scale, raw material acquisition, mechanical assembly sourcing, and the development of those suppliers to meet rigorous standards. Many of the bots starring in short YouTube videos don't have the repeatability, reliability, or power consumption aspects under control. In other words, they are not production worthy. Every new category has to pass through this filter. This will just be an extremely tough one. This happens over the course of any new complex category being invented. Right now, humanoid robots are prone to breaking down far more often than humans, which isn't good. Common failures include sensor degradation, motor stalling, overheating, and system crashes from minor environmental factors like dust, heat, or network glitches. Overheating is a standout problem. Both motors and batteries generate excessive heat during operation, limiting runtime and requiring cooldown periods, a reality that isn't evident in short demo videos. For instance, one US bot manufacturer is reported to have recently halted larger pre production volumes for a redesign cycle due to issues such as overheating motors, limited battery life of just a few hours, fragile transmissions, and low load capacity. This echoes broader industry challenges. Actuators and joints wear out quickly under stress, and balance systems that rely on IMUs, inertial measurement units, can fail in dynamic environments, leading to falls or instability. Companies building products like this track MTTF and MTBF mean time to failure or mean time between failures, amongst several other metrics to quantify life expectancy. And those YouTube demos, they often misrepresent readiness. They typically showcase cherry-picked successes. For example, Boston Dynamics' Atlas parkour routine succeeded only one in 20 attempts during early tests. Insiders from high-profile companies report misleading or borderline fraudulent demos, such as obscuring supports or editing out failures, all to hype capabilities. In real-world production settings, the reliability for established robot cells hovers around 88 to 95 percent, far below the 99.9 .9 percent needed for commercial viability. That 12% downtime often comes from ancillary issues, like program faults or sensor errors. Humanoids exacerbate this due to their complexity. With 30 or more actuators per robot, a single component failure can cascade. The mean time to failure for an individual actuator might be 10,000 hours, but collectively, the robot could break every 340 hours on average. Progress is being made, certainly. Advances in AI for perception and locomotion have improved capabilities. But common sense reasoning is lacking. A robot might water a human like a plant due to AI brittleness. Some analysts forecast humanoid robots evolving from prototypes in 2025 to initial commercial use between 2026 and 2028. 
but full readiness for unstructured environments could take another decade to reach that 99.9% .9 reliability. My view is that we're on a journey. We have to get from small sample sizes with limited runtime to larger sample sizes with increasingly longer runs to failure, all while introducing the environmental stress typical of a factory. Getting to a design and supply chain capable of this level of quality will play out over the next one to two years with constant iteration thereafter. This leads us to the heart of the hardware problem, the actuators. They are the muscles of humanoids, enabling dexterity and power, but scaling them to mass production faces major bottlenecks. First, there's cost and capacity. High-precision actuators, like harmonic drives, use rare materials like high-grade gears, driving costs up. A single humanoid might need 16 rotary and 14 linear actuators, costing between $400 and $1,000 each at scale, but they are currently far higher. The supply chains are immature. No established global network exists for humanoid-specific components, unlike in the EV or smartphone industries. But it's important to remember, EV and smartphone supply chains didn't exist either until they were built. I was directly in front of leading the development of the first smartphone supply chains. It was not easy, and looking back, seemed monumental at the time. Right now, manufacturers are using slower, prototype-like processes, like CNC for thread forming, to ensure precision for testing. But mass production needs a much higher rate, higher UPH, or units per hour, using easier, repeatable production techniques at much lower costs. Then there are the technical challenges. Actuators must balance torque density, heat dissipation, low weight, zero backlash, and force transparency for safety. Overheating reduces lifespan, and fragility under load, like when jumping or carrying, causes failures. Finally, there are global dependencies. China dominates actuator production through firms like Harmonic Drive suppliers, which raises geopolitical risks. Overall market forecasts suggest extremely low volume availability through 2032. Of course, that is if things remain unmitigated. Someone needs to get in there and treat this like the street fight it will end up being. Only the strong and smartest will survive and thrive. So, what are the solutions? First, build dedicated supply chains. This mirrors EV strategies. Investing in vertical integration, like Tesla designing its own custom actuators, governments could subsidize this localization, but right now, the US government seems way behind. We should have already seen targeted support if we want to get ahead of China. Second, an intense R&D focus. This means prioritizing advanced materials, better cooling tech, and modular designs for easier maintenance. The goal is cost reduction through economies of scale. Morgan Stanley estimates actuators could drop to sub $500 with high volume production, but it needs to be way lower. Third, collaborations are key. This means forming alliances with auto and electronics giants for shared R and D, as seen in China. Predictive maintenance software, powered by custom AI schemes in the manufacturing environment, like NVIDIA's tools, can preempt failures and improve tolerances. I know Tesla has very advanced capability in this area, and I'm sure they will leverage it. This brings me to my strongest recommendation. Humanoid robot production shares striking parallels with smartphone manufacturing. Both involve precision electronics and assembly. Smartphones integrate chips, batteries, and sensors. Humanoids require similar integration of actuators, AI chips, and sensors, but with added mechanical complexity. Both rely on scalability to reduce cost, and both face challenges with labor shortages and supply chain vulnerabilities. Electronics giants are already getting involved. 
Foxconn is partnering with UB Tech for humanoids. Jabil is collaborating with Aptronic on its Apollo robot. However, these contract manufacturers often lack the advanced manufacturing design resources and the supplier development geniuses who ultimately figure out how to get part number one to be precisely the same as part number 10 million. This is why humanoid makers should reach out to the premium smartphone makers. These companies are the best on the planet at designing for manufacturing and scale. Think of a smartphone. It's a high-precision, dense rectangle that wraps itself around 1,200 to 1,500 components. 350 to 600 of those parts are custom. Custom mechanicals, high-precision decoration, and various high-strength materials. These companies have hundreds of people focused on industrial design, engineering, supplier capability, and operational scaling. It may be the richest pool of this talent in any one location, and they are unbelievably experienced. The smartphone design, engineering, and supply chains are mature. The rate of innovation has been slowing for the past five to seven years. If all of these resources were under one entity, that one entity would clearly be shifting its best talent over to humanoids. It's a no-brainer. But today, these are all separate companies. Budding humanoid makers would be well served to reach out and partner with them. These same companies could also become future customers using advanced humanoids to build their own products and enable supply localization at lower costs. In summary, while humanoid hardware is progressing, reliability gaps and supply issues are creating a ceiling on output. Expect incremental pilots in 2025, not full-scale dominance. But partnerships with smartphone manufacturing expertise could be the catalyst that accelerates this, transforming industries, just like EVs did to conventional auto manufacturing.